had a really packed schedule lately, including lots of packing protein chromatography columns. We're basically preparing these little beads, this resin inside of a column, this like tube that I can then flow the solution containing proteins through to help me separate them based on various properties of how they interact with the resin and much more on that in other posts. But sometimes these columns come like pre-packed for things like use with an acta. But when you're doing things with the gravity flow method, when you're using some sort of column like this, or maybe a small scale, one of these, you're gonna have to actually pack the columns yourselves where basically all it means is you take this little slurry of the resin and you stick it in the column and you let the liquid throw, flow through um, and then the, the resin is kind of gonna settle to the bottom it's not gonna go through because there's a filter on the bottom of here um, but the liquid will go through and then later you'll be flowing your protein solution through but when you take it out of the bottle what's really important is that you remember that the amount that's in the bottle this is like a slurry so it's the resin mixed with some sort of stored solution. This matters for a couple reasons. One is that you're going to run to get rid of that storage solution and equilibrate the resin, get it used to the buffer that you're going to be binding in. And the other is that the volume that you pipette out of this tube and into your column is not going to be the same as the amount of the resin in the column. So typically we refer to the amount of actual resin in the column as the column volume or CV. And you'll see in the purification protocols, things will often be in terms of CV. It'll be like 10 CVs a wash buffer. So basically Basically, if you had a one mil column volume, you do five mils or 10 mils of your wash buffer. So don't get confused with size exclusion chromatography. The column volume is a little different because things are going through the beads, so it's more complicated. But when we're talking about something with affinity chromatography or ion exchange, where basically thing, your protein is sticking to that resin and the other stuff is not sticking to, or it's sticking to it more loosely. With this sort of case, when we're talking about the resin volume, um, the column volume, we're typically talking about like the packed bed volume. Um, and so by packed bed, that's what we're talking about when we're packing, when we're getting the, the resin to kind of like settle. And basically, it's because it has to settle because it's in this slurry. Often, this is so this is a glutathione sulfurous resin, and it's like a 75% slurry. With the other kinds of resin, if like nickel NTA, that often comes as a 50% slurry. So, what this would mean was that 50% of it would be your resin, and 50% of it would be whatever storage buffer it's in. So, when you go and you say want a one mil column volume, you would actually have to pipe it out two mils. If for the 75%, I wanted a one mil column volume, I'd have to do one mil times four thirds, so 1.33 uh, mils of this um, slurry in order to get a one mil column volume. So you can find out what like the percentage of the slurry is of the original bottle if you like go online. Sometimes you have to Google and find weird stuff. Um, but remember that that's only valid if the column, if the tube is like unopened. And it should be valid all the time that you've taken it straight from the tube. But because the resin will settle, you have to make sure that you mix it well before you pipette out your resin. And if the person before you hadn't mixed it well, or maybe you hadn't mixed it well, well then you're, the slurry is going to be a different percentage. So you want to make sure that you mix it well beforehand. And if, if someone forgot, or maybe you have reused the resin and so it's in a different volume now, you can always figure out, like estimate how much, what percentage it is by doing things like putting it, um, pipetting some out into a graduated cylinder or typically just like an Eppendorf tube for a little volume or a larger volume, you can do um, like a Falcon tube to basically just let the resin settle and then see where the, the resin line is and where the total volume line is. Is. And the percent solution, the percentage will be the, the resin line divided by the total volume line. You can also do it by putting it in a column and then calculating the actual column, like the volume inside of the column. Um, so you want to take into account like the inner diameter of the tube as well as the bed height and you can calculate the volume that way um, as to figure out how much resin is actually in here and to make things easier for you in the future you can also kind of like draw a line on there and then in the future you can kind of just like estimate it as you go in and watch it settle down and add a little more if you need to to get to that line so that's helpful if you um, do like the same volume a lot of times you can put little marks on the tube and so that'll give you a sense of where it is and often it doesn't need to be very precise when we're just doing some sort of affinity chromatography column but we do want to know the column volume because this is going to tell us like how many washes to do and it also lets us kind of like we want to customize the column volume based on how much protein we expect how much um 
what binding capacity the resin has, as well as things like what volume we have. So even if the binding capacity is high enough that we'd have plenty of, um, we'd have plenty, it'd be enough to bind to our protein. If we have a really large volume, the protein is going to be really dilute. It's going to, all those protein molecules are going to have to have a chance to run into one of those resin molecules. Um, and so that would take more time. You can increase the time that you're incubating it, or you can also add more um, of your column, your column volume, do a larger column volume. When you go up in column volume, it, it'll slow down how fast it goes. So you might want to go from like a smaller size to something with a bigger size. And they have even bigger ones if you need more resin. Um, some of the resin is a lot more expensive though, so you want to use as little as possible, but still be able to get the job done. If you need more exact um, like amounts of column volumes, I'll have a I'll link to like a site of the um, they have a nice post on like actually calculating it more accurately. But again, for this, just an estimate is okay. And this what it's also helpful if when you re, when you regenerate your resin. So afterwards, you can often regenerate the resin with some sort of like high salt wash or high competitor wash followed by a high salt wash. There are more um, detailed things you can do if you have protein stuck on your column, but you should be able to regenerate the resin to use it again and again. But you're not going to want to stick that back in the original bottle. Instead, stick it in like a labeled tube that was with the what protein that you used that time. Because you typically you only want to use the resin for like the same protein. So you wouldn't want to do a purification, regenerate the resin, and then do a purification of another protein with that resin. But you could do another purification of the same protein with that resin. I mean, of course, you could do a different protein, but just just it's better if possible to avoid the contamination between the different proteins in case there's a little stuck on there or something like that. You never know. So that's the basics. Um, so choose your column volume that you want, figure out what percentage slurry you have, and then divide the column volume by the percentage to get what amount you actually have to pipette in. Pipette at that in, and then allow it to settle down in the column. So basically you can um, turn the stopcock and let it flow through. Um, it'll go really fast at first, and you're like, oh, this isn't gonna be too bad. And then it'll go really, really slow as the column gets packed. Um, and then the column will pack all the way down and voila, you've got your packed column. Oh, and the reason why is this slurry in the first place is a few fold. One is that you never want the column to dry out. Another is that this often has like some sort of preservative in there, which makes it more important to wash it out, but also helps keep things from growing in there. And finally, you can't just pipette pure resin, but you can pipette the slurry as long as you mix it well first.